Hey viewers, in my last video, I showed you the specialized hard rock that I found at a garage sale for $15 and went over all the different issues with it. And so now I'm ready to get started working on it. Start off by pulling off the wheels. And I want to remove the chain. I'm not going to reuse it. It's a rusty piece of junk. But I do want to keep it to uh, size the, the new chain because the new chain will shoot, should be the same length as the old chain. Just it'll be a brand new, good condition chain. So this rusty piece of junk. And there. Well, I'm going to be replacing all the cables and housings anyway, so snip. And then I'm going to remove and clean up this rusty derailleur here. And then go ahead and remove the rear derailleur as well so I can clean it up. So now I want to clean the rust off of some of these parts. Like the skewers here have a bunch of rust on them. And the front derailleur has a little bit of rust on there. And even the rear derailleur, like on the spring, has like a little bit of rust on there. So I'm going to throw them in this little bin here. And then I'm going to use some uh, vapor rust and just soak these parts in here. And hopefully that will help remove a lot of this rust. Just make them look a little nicer. And we'll go from there. And then I'm going to remove the, the kickstand here so I can clean it up. By cleaning it up, I mean taking it off the bike and leaving it off the bike because I don't like kickstands. Ah, gone. Okay, well I've had these soaking overnight and oh that looks like way better there and uh, okay the spring looks better in there. I got just a little bit of just dirt. I just got to kind of scrub, scrub that up. And here's the skewers, and these look way better now. So I'm just going to go ahead and wash these with like dish soap, get them all scrubbed up and uh, dry them off, and they're ready to go. Now when I bought the bike, the forks looked really rough shape. Uh, parts were sticking out there, and I just planned on replacing them, which was kind of a shame because they matched the bike. They looked pretty cool. But then the more I looked at them, I'm like, you know, I might be able to replace those parts, the, the seal and the sleeve in there, with brand new parts. I looked online, they're available. So I kind of decided I'm going to go ahead and overhaul the things. But then I took a closer look at these. And I saw a big crack right here in the side of the lower. So this fork is just toast. And so I'll go ahead and replace it with a uh, different one. Okay, let's get started removing these brakes here. And remove this little top cap here so I can uh, take the stem off and start removing the fork there and then loosen the stem here that's tight oh, and that just came right off that was easy well, while I got this open, I might as well kind of go in here, pull the bearings out and clean all this and just re-lube everything and put it all back together nice and clean and lubed. Well, I needed a replacement fork, something about the same size, needed to have brake bosses on it. So I looked at what I had lying around and I found these RockShox Judy XCs. They're about the same size, so the geometry should be fine. I uh, steer is just a hair shorter on there, so I may need to remove one or two of the spacers on there. But overall, they're a better quality fork than these Sun Tours, so I think this will work out great. Well, I've already cleaned and lubed the bearing here, packed it with grease here, and this is the, uh, the bottom uh, headset race. So I'm going to get a little bit of uh, grease around the race here to help hold the, uh, the bearing in place and put this in here and it needs to go in the same way that it came out and if you're not sure exactly which way like a cage bearing like this goes in I have a video on figuring that out and then here's the other bearing again cleaned and lubed and uh, here's the top headset race so I'm just gonna put some uh, 
grease around in the uh, the race here like this and then set the bearing in place there now to install the fork I'm just gonna slide it up here like this and then I've got the little upper race here so I'm gonna slide this down here like this I got the wedge the wedge is gonna go down here like that and then I got some spacers here. Uh, there's two wider weight, uh, spacers and a narrower spacer. So I'll put one of the wider ones on there first and put the narrower one on there. And I'm gonna leave the one wider one off and test fit this to see how this fits with the stem. And that actually looks pretty good there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the top cap in place here. Kind of tighten that down a little bit. Can I get it roughly straightened out? I'll have to straighten it out later more. And then tighten the stem in place. And I'll readjust this a little bit later, but this will hold it in place for right now, like that. Okay, so to install the brakes onto these forks here, uh, I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, marine grease here on the brake bosses there, so everything kind of moves smoothly. And then to install the uh, brake here, the pin needs to go into the little hole there. So I'll get this in there and I'm going to use slightly shorter screws than came out of the other bike because I tried those already onto these and they bottomed out. So apparently these are just not quite as deep as the other forks were. So slightly shorter screws there. Make sure it moves smoothly. Then there, there, and so those move nice and smoothly. The uh, handlebars have a light coating of rust on there, very light surface rust. I want to clean that off, but in order to do that, I need to remove the handlebar, you know, so I need to remove the grips and the brake levers and the shifters and remove from the stem. So that's what I'm working on right now. First, I want to remove the grip, and so what I want to do is get something under the grip, get some alcohol in there. That'll work like a lubricant, and that'll help me remove the uh, the grip. A lot of times, I use just an Allen wrench, poke it under there, but I always have viewers go, "Oh, you scratch the handlebar," but see, underneath the grip, so it doesn't really matter that much. So I'm going to try a zip tie here. See if I can push this under here. It's a little difficult to kind of get it under there. I got a little ways under here, but working under there, and see if I can get some. Rubbing alcohol under there. This is just uh, isopropyl alcohol from the drugstore. And work this back and forth a little bit. And then see if I can get the uh, zip tie farther under there. Yep, so it's sliding farther under there at this point. And a little bit more. So that worked pretty well and no scratches. Then slide off the brake lever here, just loosen the clamp there. And then loosen the clamp here on the shifter. And then do the same thing on the other side. And then just loosen the stem and I should be able to remove the handlebar pretty easily. Got it out. Now I want to go ahead and clean the rust off the handlebars. I also pulled the uh, cassette off the rear wheel and so I want to soak that. Now because of the uh, the shape of the handlebar 
I can't really fit this into the bin here. So I'm going to show you a uh, technique I use for odd shaped stuff like this where you can't really submerge it in the vapor rust. Simply take some paper towels, soak them into the vapor rust, get them all nice and uh, wet, then wrap the item or whatever like the handlebars or if you got like a spot on the frame whatever just go ahead and wrap it with the vapor rust soaked paper towels now the the vapor rust it needs to stay wet in order for it to work and if you leave it like this it's just going to dry out and not work so what you can do is get some uh, like plastic wrap and go ahead and wrap the paper towels in plastic wrap and that will help keep the stuff moist for the vapor rust to work and then just leave this and check it in the morning well, I let this stuff soak in the vapor rust for about 24 hours and the cassette now looks pretty much just like new. Very nice and shiny and clean. And I unwrapped the handlebars and I did a, like a light rubbing of uh, fine steel wool over there to kind of clean it off. And so now I have just nice clean metal there uh, where the surface rust had been. And so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and spray paint this probably like a nice satin black. Well, I got some spray paint here. It's a uh, satin black. Uh, it's got paint primer in there, rust protection, durable adhesion, fastest drying time. Uh, I'll go ahead and give this stuff a shot. I could probably, you know, use actual primer on there, but uh, I think this should uh, work well enough. Just repeated light coats. Well, I finished painting the handlebars and I'm gonna let them dry like for 24 hours. And while they're drying, I went ahead and remounted the cassette onto the rear wheel here and also the skewer. And I uh, pumped up the tires. The, uh, the, the tubes that were in the tires were not holding air. So I replaced the tubes in both the tires, the front and back. And uh, the tires actually looked like they're in pretty good shape. So I just kind of cleaned them up a little bit. But let's go ahead and remount the rear wheel here. And I can start uh, reinstalling the drivetrain. And then remount the rear derailleur here. Get this started here. Like that. And then I want to mount uh, the front derailleur here. And I want to get it in about the same place it had been. And fortunately, there's still marks kind of on the seat tube where it had been height wise. So I'll just go ahead and mount it in that same spot there. And then I want the cage parallel with the chain rings there. Go ahead and tighten this down a little bit. And then as the uh, cage comes out, I want to make sure it should just uh, miss the uh, teeth of the uh, big chain ring there by a couple millimeters and that actually looks pretty good. So go ahead and straighten a little bit there and tighten it down a little bit more. And that looks pretty good. Well now I'm getting ready to uh, cut a new chain. So I have a brand new chain here and I have the old chain. So if I put them side by side and just go through them so I compare it and cut them to like the exact same size, make sure that all the links match up here. And then I get to the end here and I don't want to have the side plates here. So I'm going to break the chain right there because I want to end with the uh, little inside plates because my missing link, uh, little master link, is going to replace the outer links. So I want to go ahead and break the chain right there. Just like that. And so now I want to uh, mount the chain here. So have it on to the first cog there. And... 
Then it's gonna go over this pulley and run it through the cage here. And over the tension pulley here, like this. And uh, make sure that you have it. There's like a little uh, guide here, a little guard thing here. Make sure that it goes kind of through that. So that you want to have it just touching the pulley and touching the pulley here, not dragging over any of the parts of the cage there. And then I have a missing link here to use these to uh, join the two ends of the chain. One goes on one side of there and the other one goes on the other side of the uh, chain and bring them together and get them all connected here and then pull them apart and now the chain is locked together. Well, I got the derailleurs on there. I got a brand new chain and that's going nice and smoothly. So it's moving along. Okay, the handlebar is all dried here. I've had it sitting for a couple days. So I can just slide this through here and um, try to get centered here and then tighten the little screws in here and try to get them all tightened in relatively evenly. Like that. Okay, so now I'm ready to install the shifters and brake levers and grips. And so I have the uh, little uh, clamp there loosened and I'm gonna slide the shifter there on first. I'm not gonna clamp it down yet. And then I'm gonna slide on the brake lever here. And I'm not gonna clamp that down yet. Then I wanna install the grip. And how I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna take a little bit of uh, the rubbing alcohol that I used to get them off here. Just kind of squirt a little bit inside the grip there. Shake it around in there so it kind of gets all coated in there. It works like a little lubricant, allows it to slide right on there pretty easily. Well, relatively easy anyway. Okay, and then while it's still wet in there, you can adjust the grip in, in there like that. And so now that I have the grip on there, I can uh, clamp down the brake lever and shifter here. And there had been a gap here between the uh, brake lever and the grip. So I'm just gonna leave, I don't know, about a half an inch there. Then clamp that down. And I can always adjust the position of these a little bit later. Like that. And then I can bring the uh, shift lever over here and try to get it adjusted about where I want it to be and then tighten it down. And again, I can adjust this a little bit later because maybe when I get on the bike, I can adjust the angle a little bit for both of these. It might be a little easier to see while you're actually sitting on a bike how you want them positioned. So one side done. Okay, so now I'm gonna do this side. So I'm gonna slide the shift lever on first. Then I'm gonna slide the brake lever on here. Like this. I got the grip. Squirt a little bit of alcohol inside there. Shake it around so it gets all wet inside there. And then slide this on here like this. Make sure you get it all the way on. Get it nice and straight. Then I can bring the uh, brake lever here. And I want to try to like line the angle with the other side as well. And so then I'm going to clamp this down like this. Then I can bring the shift lever over here and get it roughly equal with what the other side is. And clamp this down like that. And that side's all done. Now I want to replace all the cables and housings and interestingly on this bike they're 
retained to the frame completely by zip ties. So I'm just going to start snipping uh, zip ties here. Yep, so now that I have the uh, zip ties all cut, all the cable housings are loose on here. So I'm going to start with uh, probably doing the rear derailleur cable housing. So I'm going to pull this off here like this. And might as well pull the other cable housings off while I'm here to get the front uh, derailleur shifter cable housing off of there. And so the new cable housing is going to be the exact same length as the old cable housing. So what I can do is just put it side by side and cut it the exact same length as the original cable housing. Like that. And then I can use an awl here to open up the lining in the end of the cable so that the, the cable can uh, go in and out smoothly, just like that. And then I'm going to install ferrules onto the end of the housing, just slide them on like that. Now I need to remove the old ship cable there, so I just have to hit the small lever here, and on these, they just push out through the back of the little ship lever there. So I just pull the old cable out and slide the new cable in and pull it through. Slide the cable into the housing, push it through so it comes out the other end. Get the cable housing seated into the shifter here. And then I'm going to route this around the head tube like this and bring it back towards the rear derailleur. Now on these there's no barrel adjuster on the derailleur itself but there's one on the shifter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this all the way in and then turn it out maybe a turn and a half and that will give me some uh, room for adjustment. Uh, a lot out, but a little bit back in. So in case I get the cable just a little too tight, I can turn it back in. Now there's actually like three channels for uh, cables uh, going underneath the top tube here, each with uh, its own little uh, holders here for zip ties. And the rear derailleur cable went through the center one, so that's I'm going to stick with that. And so I'm going to slide a zip tie through the little mounts here. And... I'm not going to clamp it down real tight at this point because uh, I want to be able to move it back and forth a little bit but I want to kind of hold it into place and so I'm going to mount the zip ties on all the little uh, holders here for this cable. And so now I have all my zip ties holding the cable in place uh, and so now I can work on getting all connected up and I'll come back and uh, tighten them and trim them all down later. And so now I want to hook up the cable into the derailleur here. I still have the remnant of cable from before. So go ahead and loosen this little clamp like that. And then I have my new cable here. I can run this down through here. Get the housing all seated in there. And then I got to run the, the cable down through here. It's got like a weird little guide here like this. So I'm going to slide this down through here. pull it taut and then bring this up to the little cable clamp and I already have the derailleur shifted down uh, to where it would be down onto the uh, small cog here and so go ahead and tighten this clamp onto the cable. I'm having the cable here kind of pull taut and then tighten that down like that. Okay, so now I want to go ahead and test the shifting here. So I'll shift up, 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 and it went up two. So I have the cable a little too tight. So I'm gonna loosen that, uh, take that barrel adjuster and turn it in a little bit. 
and then I'll try it again. So down here, up, 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 down, 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 down. And that's pretty close. And trim the cable housing here. Slide a little crimp end on. And crimp this into place. And done with the rear derailleur. Okay, so now I need to tighten down and clip off all these zip ties here. And I can do that the old fashioned way. Just go ahead and pull it and snip it off with some nail clippers. But I have a tool and tools are cool. So I'm gonna play with this tool here. And it's designed to go ahead and pull the zip tie tight and clip it off really closely to the little lock there. And so how this works is just kind of go ahead and put it in there like this and just kind of uh, pump it, just squeeze it. And when it gets there, and then it snips it off there, and it actually does a pretty good job there. So, do you need this tool? No, but it's still kind of a cool tool to have. And I'll go ahead and include a uh, link down in the description if you want to check it out. Now to hook up the front shifter and derailleur, and the same thing here. I'm going to push the old cable out here. Just, I have it shifted all the way down, and sometimes you have to twist it around to get the head out through that little hole there. So I'm going to pull the old cable out. And then work the new cable in. And it comes out through the barrel adjuster and then pull it all the way through till the head of the cable is seated inside the shifter like that. Well I have a new piece of uh, cable housing uh, cut to, to match the one that was on the uh, front shifter and I have uh, ferrules on the end so I'm just going to slide the cable down through here and get this one in place. Well, I attach zip ties to hold the cable in place to the little holders here. And I put the end of the cable down here in the cable stop. And so let's go ahead and get the cable attached to the derailleur and get, start getting it all hooked up. Okay, so I need to remove the little uh, cable fragment from the old cable here. So I'll loosen the little clamp here. And now to hook up the new cable, and I'm going to slide this down through here like this. And, and I think I want the cable to go through this little part right there to kind of guide it there. And then hook it down through this little clamp, get it underneath the clamp there. And I'll, I have the shifter shifted down to where it would be on the small chain ring. I have the chain on the small chain ring. I also adjusted the barrel adjuster on there so that uh, tightened it all the way in, turned it out about a, a turn and a half there to give us some uh, room for adjustment. Now I'm going to tighten down this clamp here and I'm pulling the cable taut. like this and we'll go ahead and give the shifting a try. Okay, so let's go ahead and give this a shot and see how this works. So shift up, shift up, shift down, shift down. And I have it on the uh, biggest uh, cog in the back. So let me try on the smallest cog on the back and see how that works. And that actually works pretty good. I don't think I need to make any adjustments on it at all. Uh, if I do, maybe just uh, click this way or that way, but that actually looks pretty good as it is. Okay, so trim this cable a little bit and put a crimp end on here like this. And then tuck it down into here. Maybe bend it around a little bit to kind of so it's out of the way and not hitting anything. Just like that. And then I tightened and trimmed all the uh, zip ties on there, so that's all done. Okay, so now I'm ready to start hooking up the brakes. I'm gonna start with the front brake first. I've already cut a piece of uh, cable housing to match the piece that had been on there, and there's a pair of ferrules on there. So I'm gonna insert a brand new cable into the lever, run it through here, have those all lined up, and I'll screw those in there. Then, run the cable into the housing and can I get this set in there for now?
I still need to remove the little bit of uh, cable that was left over there, so just loosen this little cable clamp and pull that out of there. Okay, so I have a brand new noodle. The old noodles were just rusted out, so I got some new noodles. And they're not real expensive. And so I'm going to slide this through here like this. And it comes with like a new little, new little uh, rubber boot. So I'm going to slide that onto there like this. And then get this put in through the little holder here. Get the little boot in place. Slide the cable in through here. Kind of pull them together a little bit. And just try to get them roughly adjusted here. And so I'll just kind of tighten down this just a little bit here. And then test the brake to see how it feels, how, how much movement I have there. Too much lever bottoms out, so pull this a little bit tighter. Test the lever. And still a little bit too much. Just pull it just a little bit more and test it. Feels like I have pretty good uh, movement on the lever there. The lever doesn't bottom out. And uh, yeah, it's a really cheap boot. So I'm going to tighten this down here like this. It looks like I may need to adjust the movement on those a little bit. But I think the cable's adjusted pretty well. Okay, so the problem I'm having is this lever isn't moving quite as much as this one, so I want to kind of pull this one out a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten this screw down here. I'm just going to turn it, tighten it a half a turn, and then what I'm going to do is this screw over here, I'm going to loosen it by half a turn. So let me see. Like that. And that looks better. Good movement on there. So now I'll just go ahead and trim this off here and put a little crimp end onto here like this. Just slide it on there like that. Crimp it into place like that. And then a lot of these you can just tuck back behind the brake lever like that. So now I want to hook up the rear brake. So I'll just uh, bring this over here, slide the end of the cable into the lever, put down this little slot here, line the slots up on the, the little adjusters there, and then turn those in for now. And then I have a new bit of uh, cable housing that I cut, the same length as the old cable housing. So I'm going to slide this into place and then sit th seat this into the uh, brake lever like that. Well, I have the cable here held in place with zip ties underneath the uh, top tube here. If anyone's wonder why they have the zip tie stuff like this, uh, this frame is also fitted for uh, disc brakes, so if you wanted to run, like, say, hydraulic lines or something through there, uh, you would be able to do that. And again, got to remove this little uh, remnant of uh, cable from the old cable. And then I have a brand new noodle. So I'm going to slide this in here like this and get the little rubber boot slid it into place here like this and so then go ahead and fit this in here seat this into there like that cables fully seated in there and go ahead and tighten this down a little bit and kind of get a feel for it to see how it is to pull it in a little bit let it out a little bit and just tighten it down just a hair kind of get a feel for it Test the brake lever, and nah, it's it's bottoming out, so it needs to be in a little bit more. So I'll pull that in like this, and that actually feels pretty good there, like this. Uh, maybe just a hair more, 
like that. I want to make sure that the brake lever does not bottom out and I got good movement on both sides here. So I'm going to tighten this down here like this. Test it again. And that looks pretty good. And clip the cable there. Get a little uh, cable crimp end thing here and crimp that on like this. I'll keep the cable from fraying or poking anybody. And then I'm just going to kind of shove this back behind like that. Done. And then I tightened up and trimmed the zip ties here. I did change it. I did have uh, individual zip ties on the other side for, you know, for each thing, holding the one cable on the far side. And so I removed those, and so now I have one cable going through and holding both the outside cables. So the way that these uh, little uh, mounts here, it just seemed to fit better that way. So uh, I went ahead and changed that. And done. Finally. Uh, this bike just needed so much work. Uh, I, I spent a lot on it, not in the way of parts, but in time. Just getting everything all cleaned up and working. Uh, in the way of parts, I need to replace the fork. The old fork was just toasted. Best guess is water got inside it, froze it, and burst it from the inside. The chain was rusted solid, so brand new chain. I saw new cables, housings, noodles on there, so the shifting and braking will be smoother. Uh, put new uh, grips on there because the old grips were worn and very dirty. And I had to put new tubes in the tires because the, the old tubes were just not holding air. But I think that, for the most part, is all the stuff actually put on there, on the bike, new. Um, but I think it came out great. I think the boy who's going to be getting the bike is just going to be thrilled with it. I think he's just going to love it. Uh, anyway, what do you what do you think? Let me know down in the comments. Hopefully you found this video useful or interesting. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed to my channel, click the subscribe button. Be sure to click the little bell so you get notified of new videos as they come out. I'm over on Facebook, RJ the Bike Guy. Go over there, like that page. I post a lot of stuff over there. And I have a webpage, rjthebikeguy.com. Go over and check that out. Anyway, thank you very much for watching.